the technology, whoever made it, is, is something that really couldn't be recreated. And there's so much in the skull that uh, the more you study it, the more unusual it is. So, uh, would you like to take it for the camera, please? Would you mind? Just yeah. very slowly. In, in so what that way can... do you think it's so... Um, the, the technology is so special. Could you okay. explain uh, what you mean by yeah. that? The technology, well, the fact is... Could it be created today if we had a, a, a crystal this big? Well, it would, the problem is is the, the, the carving of the jaw, and that's what okay. is so exciting and, and messes up the scientists. The scientists want to come in. Uh, they made tests, and they found they couldn't find any kind of tool marks or anything on the, on the whole skull, but there were some around the, the jaw and the teeth. But when uh, Dolan cracked the tooth when, they were at, when it was at Hewlett Packard, he did restoration on it to repair it. So it's hard to say where the markings came from, but the thing is, uh, even so, the thing that blows the scientist's mind is the fact is they can't figure out how the skull was separated. Mm -hmm. And then being separated, and with Hewlett Packard's test, the top half of the skull and the jaw are the same piece of crystal. And, okay. uh, and that right there, uh, how they, how they can uh, separate the, the two with technology, even today, would be pretty much impossible. And the fact is, how they put prisms inside the skull, how they put the lenses in there that work through the eye to the eye sockets, uh, that would take like zero gravity to try to do it today. And uh, I really, I don't think we could really duplicate it uh, even with zero gravity. So, uh, who did it? How they did it? You know, I, that's what makes the skull so interesting. But the real thing about the skull of what it is, is what you feel about it. You know, mm -hmm. people pick up this energy, this specialness. And so... Sure. Uh, well, crystals, I mean, in general, will give you energy. You can combine maybe, amethyst with right. your hand. I, I get energy. The reason I'm doing this, I get energy yeah. with my hands, and I can feel vortexes. Okay, okay. well, did you feel it outside? Yes, I did. Yeah, you, I mean, it's not like it... It's, just, it's not like right here. Yeah, the waves. It's waves yeah. going out. We, when you put your hands by it, it's a connection to it. Sure. But if you, you can have your hands out here and you can That's feel right. it, you can be out across the street, really, and pick well, it up. Well, I actually felt it when we were coming up the stairs. I could mm -hmm. feel there's a the vibration shift. now that's going on not down this down the hall, so to speak, because of the presence mm -hmm. of the thing. So it, that... Um, so that's a, kind of the... It's a little bit unusual than, you know, just because it's, it's crystal, but... Uh, so... How many years has this skull been in your life? Uh, let's see, probably about uh, off and on for probably 12 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what has it changed your life, do you feel? Completely, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, uh, especially uh, my life now is just like a, it's a fast moving river. It's seeing things happen. It's like, uh, uh, like in just pick a month, like uh, August. August, I went to uh, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, met a lot of people, did a lot of lectures, come back, uh, somebody from England comes over and stays with me, somebody from Italy comes and stays with me, one of them maybe, the, the, Italy, the, the person from Italy had to go over left, and the, but the one from England stayed right to the last time, day, and then I took off and went to Sedona and Scottsdale to do lectures, get back, and then I do another, it's just like a... So, you said you, so it takes you, it's kind of like links you to the rest of the people in the planet. Right. And, and also it, it uh, pulls me and puts me in positions like I'm down here, I don't know exactly why, but I, you know, I'm running into these, these people that have the need for to be here. The need, it is a, it's, I'm finding the country to be an amazing place. And I think there's some really special energy spots and the skull, one of the jobs it does, it works on the heart chakra, opening people's heart to this universal love. But it, what it also does is it works on the, 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 uh, 
the ley lines of the earth mm -hmm. and it helps to balance out the energy and what's so important with the shift that's coming in 2012 it's like if if it's uh, out of the earth is out of balance at all when all this energy hits it it's gonna you know it'll just fly like a uh, anywhere you know could be <laughs> we don't we want to see what could happen but if we can work with people on these grid lines and open up the energy and make it in balance, sure. then the energy hitting it could make it a lot less. And that's okay. that's one of the reasons I do so you this. I think that's one of the things. Well, Have you been to Stonehenge that, yeah. and to uh, to Egypt to the pyramids? Uh, let's see. I have to go to Egypt to the pyramids. And the, the skull has been the Stonehenge, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you still have to go to the pyramids. Yeah, and I feel that's important. One of my important yeah. things that I need to go. And it's not just the. I think it's Spain. Thieves or wherever that, that area is supposed to be a special area that has some kind of energy I need to go to. So, okay. uh, but I find that where I'm supposed to go, the people call and say, "Hey, we, we need to. We would like to do a lecture here, and it, mm -hmm. it seems to be the right place." So, okay. if that's the place, it'll <laughs> I'll probably be there. I see. Okay, it was found in 1924. Uh, I mean, I listened yeah. to your lecture, right. but wasn't sure where you. Where you kind of stepped in. Okay, yeah. What happened, it was found by uh, F.A. Mitchell Hedges had it since uh, the Mayans gave it back to him in 1927. But the marvelous young girl found it. Actually. Yeah, well, it was yeah, his adopted daughter, Anna. Uh -huh. They did it, well, they found it together, yeah. Okay. But, uh, but he had it till 59. When he passed away, it went back to Anna, and she had it till 2007. Really? And, yeah, in 2007. But what happened is uh, I met her... There's a lot of things in, in Anna's life that with us, and Mitchell Hedges' life that can, you know had parallel with things that happened to me. And I was in Panama, a lot of the places they were at, and I had a, felt a connection right away to the skull. And I saw pictures of it. Uh -huh. In '81, I heard about it, where it was at, and I went up to see her and met with her, and we became really good friends. And uh, she allowed me to go with her when she did different lectures and stuff all over the world. So I was able to take her around the world go to these different sites, spiritual sites around the world, and so that was, uh, became really good friends, and she's an amazing, amazing person, so I have a, a total respect for her, it's a really neat person. So is she still alive? No, what happened is, uh, in that, uh, she traveled with her, you know, she moved from place to place a lot, so she moved from uh, Canada to England. England back to Canada. These are full moves with move, new houses and everything. Sure. And then she came back in the early two, two, 2000 and she was in Canada and she was very sick. And I talked to her on the phone and I said, uh, there was no one really around her at the time, so I said, come to Indiana and I'll take care of you. And she decided to do that. She came down there and she spent the last eight years of her life with me and I took care of her and, and uh, she taught me what she wanted to be done with the skull how it was supposed to be handled and what she believed in. Oh. And so uh, I gave my word, and that's what I'm doing right now, is carrying out my word. My word was that I would take the skull and make it available to people that felt the importance of it, mm -hmm. okay? People that felt that uh, not everybody is drawn to the skull, but some people are really drawn to the skull, mm -hmm. and they come from all over. So by opening it up to those people, uh, that's that's part of what I my promise that I promised to her, and that's what I'm doing. Okay, and um, what is like? Was there a religious significance for Anna and the skull? And the skull. Well, you know what, uh, Anna and, and myself. You know, I'm a very spiritual person. You know, I feel the connection to God very closely and very importantly. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, at this point in my life a religious person. In the fact that I don't believe in the dogma of, of religion, but I work on the spirituality and, and working on, I believe that uh, the true essence of religion is inside the, in the person, and going into that person and finding that connection mm -hmm. is what I feel it's all about. And the skull is, is a, a tool for mankind. The Mayas believed it was a, a god to, to them. It was like their god had returned. But uh, what it really is, it's a tool uh, to uh, open the heart to that universal love. So uh, I feel the connection with the skull, and I feel spiritually, if I can help people, if I can help the world, 
and use the tool to do it, that's, that's what I feel is a very important job. Anna believe in the spiritual side, or did she believe in a more religious side? No, she, her? Uh, Anna was a very spiritual person. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we had friends that uh, they had this one friend. She was a secretary for uh, uh, for the uh, Mother Teresa, and uh, worked with Mother Teresa for a while. And she met Anna. She said Anna was a, had the same vibration. As Mother Teresa, and that's that's how she was. She was a person that if you met her, it's like you knew her all your life, and she made you feel that way. Okay. But she also, uh, you know, she was very uh, connected to the other side. Mm -hmm. So connected, it's, it's just like in the last part of her life, there was so much uh, psychic and, and different forces around her. It was just like unbelievable. It's like there was, yeah, it was the like the veil between. The other side and her where it's just so close it was just like it was popping through it was pretty amazing but uh, so she was a very spiritual person and uh, very special so um, did she ever talk about any beings that were associated with the soul oh uh, yes yeah she she, she felt uh, well there is uh, different beings that have connection with the skull and they're the ones that that work through it and the, the Mayans are very connected to the skull. The Mayans of Lubantun, that area, they're not, uh, they're a Mayan group that's different than the average Mayan. And uh, they have connections with the ETs and they have connections with the skulls. And, uh, okay, and do, you, do you know which ETs? Uh, let's see, I'm not, I wouldn't say, probably the, uh, Pla uh, the Pleiades. Pleiades is probably uh -huh. the ones. Okay. Yeah. Tall blondes. Tall blondes, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hmm. And what, where where were you from originally? Uh, Indiana. Really? Like Indiana Jones. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, right? I like, yeah. I love adventure. That makes sense. I love adventure, yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, and that's, uh, life is an adventure with a skull. It keeps you, keeps you really going on that. So, in a sense, you didn't actually start your journey until 2007, would you say? Uh, no, my journey, you know, is, uh, started, uh, you know, as far as taking it around and doing yes. stuff with people, it, it really started after Anna passed away. She passed away, uh, on my birthday in, in uh, in 2007. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she found it on her birthday, her 17th birthday. Really? Yeah, and she passed it to me on my birthday. On your birthday. It wasn't my 17th, though, but I won't well, go. I won't go into that. <laughs> but, surprise, uh, surprise. Yeah. Uh, Perry? Yes. I have one or two questions. I wonder if you could also capture me just briefly. Sure. With, uh, with this Absolutely. beautiful Absolutely. We're here for a half hour. That's all we have uh, here. So and that may be just about. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, just about. Other, other people have booked uh, sessions, is my understanding. Sure. Um, I don't come from Indiana, but I've got the hat. Right? You got the hat, yeah. yeah. I, was met, I was admiring that hat. That was cool. <laughs> so, um, and I'm, I've, I, I've been a little bit of a, an adventure in my time. I'm very, very curious about the crystal boy. Yeah. Now, I'm not. I'm s certainly not going to be asking you any information about locations or plans or logistics. Mm -hmm. But what is your feeling of the importance of that? Because if well, I feel, yeah, I feel it. You know what? There's these different objects are pieces of important in a puzzle, mm -hmm. and uh, the skull is an important piece, and also the crystal boy is an important piece. And they will be more. And yeah, when they come together, different things are very. Powerful things can happen. Uh, I'm not saying that the crystal, the crystal boy, like each object has its, its special gift and special purpose. Uh, the crystal boy, we don't know exactly what it's what it does, but I know it, it's probably a very important piece in this overall puzzle that we're we're working on. And you do have plans to retrieve this, I yeah, see. And see what it is. Well, the way I want to retrieve it is, you know, I could have retrieved it. With uh, with NBC, which had been mm -hmm. fine, but I think they would not have had the right uh, thing for the skull. They would not have been uh, the right energy. Right, the energy. Well, they wouldn't have gone to the right place. It would have probably been locked up in some 
uh, it needs to go with someone. I would, you know, I would find it, but it wouldn't be like, oh, I want to keep the skull with me. I'd like to find it and have it go with some of the spiritual leaders, maybe down in that area, yes. as long as they're going to work together so we can work on this uh, this uh, involvement that we're working on. Yes. But you do have some kind of a plan for how you're going to handle that. Yeah. Because my sense... Yeah, I have a plan. Is this is important. Yeah, yeah, I do have, yeah, I do have a plan. And uh, yeah, it's just this year has been one thing after another. And I thought I'd been able to do it by now. But mm-hmm. uh, I just haven't had the chance. This is a, a serious offer. And you must have heard this from many other people. If you want anyone to follow you around with a camera, mm-hmm. we're, we're uh, equipped to do this. Mm-hmm. And uh, it would be a huge... privilege for us. Um, we, do, we did interview somebody. Um, her name is um, Miriam Delicato. And they are talking about having a major gathering of the peoples uh, of the planet, mm-hmm. mainly with the Hopi and the Mayan coming forward and talking about the prophecies. And um, they feel also that indigenous people everywhere should be sort of connecting with this gathering. And the crystal skull may be an important ingredient in that. So I'm just throwing that out with you. Um, this would be happening in Hopi land, and I wonder if you have been to the Hopi. Um, well, I'm a very good friend and someone I really care about, respect, is uh, Grandfather Martin. And he's the uh, yeah. the elder, and he's the prophet for the Hopi Nation. Okay. And so, yeah, I am very much uh, for the Hopis, and I, uh, uh-huh. I believe in their work yeah. and what they're doing. And so, have you yeah. brought the skull to the Hopi? Yes, I have. That was one of my... Oh, really? Yeah, that's one of the things that I was drawn to do, mm. and we we did that this year. Okay. And we met with them several times. Just, just a matter of fact, the last time was just two weeks ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So you were, you were probably right near me. I, I now live in Sedona. Sedona, okay. Yeah, I was in Sedona. <laughs> I was in... Uh, yeah, I was in a... Because I, I uh, thought I heard that you'd been yeah. around. Yeah, I was, well, I was in uh, Scottsdale... Well, last, let's see, two weeks ago I was in, uh, it wasn't even two weeks ago, it was last week, mm-hmm. I was in uh, uh, Sedona, I was in Angel Valley, doing mm. a uh, lecture for Angel Valley. Okay. But uh, two weeks before that, I was in Scottsdale, and then from Scottsdale, I went to uh, up, up to Sedona, and we did some work with, with the Hopi and stuff. It was pretty mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear of the crystal orb? No. No. The crystal orb is a very special thing. It was found in uh, about 30 years ago by a gentleman called Ray Brown. He could, if you look on some of the internet, you could probably find some of that. There was, he was really big at the time. Mm-hmm. But Ray Brown uh, was uh, uh, was scuba diving on this island of Bimini, or near Bimini. I've heard this story. Okay, An incredible he, story. Yeah, and he went he went under, under yes. and they found this in a pyramid. Yes. Okay. Well. Uh, the people that were with him went back out looking for stuff, and they mm. were mysteriously killed. Mm. But he was left, and he passed away a couple of years later. And he gave the orb to his teacher, telling him never to never to show the orb to anybody until the right time. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, uh, I did a show for NBC, and it was about the crystal skull and me looking for tri- stuff in Central Another one I was talking about, mm-hmm. and uh, when I was doing this, he watched it, and he saw the skull, and he saw me, and he felt like. There, there had, must have a. You know, he felt that they had to show this, the the orb to me, and they mm. needed to be together. Mm. And, but he thought that was ridiculous because he didn't know where I was or anything. Mm. So uh, uh, what happened is uh, we, uh, I was uh, going out there for a lecture to an area where uh, and they, to these two people, and they said they had a friend there, and the friend uh, they were talking about the orb, and she said, "I know where it is, but I can't tell you." She, they said, well, you tell him that the skull's coming. Maybe he wants to see it. And when they did that, he was all excited. We brought the orb and the skull together. And we, when we brought the orb and skull together for the first time, it, we did it twice. The second time, something different happened. But the first time, the skull turned white and the orb turned gold. Wow. Wow, wonderful. Wow. But the thing is, the amazing thing about that is, I have a picture and I can show it to you. 
I would love to see this. Would yes, like we would. Absolutely. I read about this all in Charles Berlitz's book on the um, the Bermuda Triangle many years mm-hmm. ago, and I've never forgotten about it. It lodged okay. in my mind. I thought this is incredibly important, but I thought it had disappeared. It did disappear for Incredible. all these years yeah. until it just came out. And what happened is, uh, you know, the uh, the orb, it's a crystal ball and has three pyramids built inside of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, and it's pure crystal. Mm. But when we put them together, the, the skull turned white and the orb turned gold. Mm-hmm. If you look around his hand, you can see white light shooting around. Mm. That is amazing. Do you have plans to do more, to work more with the skull and the orb? Oh, of course, yeah. We were, we were working very good together. As a matter of fact, I, a couple of weeks ago, I was able to get together with them again. Mm-hmm. And when we did it this time, the skull turned blue, and the, there was blue light going all over the ground. And the next day, we were in this room that had yellow tablecloths and yellow walls. And you're looking at the, through the viewfinder on the camera, and it was yellow walls and yellow tablecloth. And when you took the picture, the skull turned blue, the tablecloth turned blue, and the walls turned blue. And you did 20, we took about 15 <laughs> pictures, and every time it did the same thing. Incredible. So, some pretty strong energy. It's that one, is Atlantean yeah. uh, orb and Atlantean skull get yes. together. It's, it's a major, I think it was a, like a connection, an old connection is what yeah, it was. And there yeah. must be more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, more. there's more. And yeah. that's what we're, we're doing right now is we're mm. putting a call out to try to bring this stuff forward. Yes. I, I believe a lot of the, the ancient people, the, the Mayas or whatever, have some of this stuff in their own possession that they don't they're afraid to bring out because yes. they know if it comes out that the, the the government tries to take it away from them right yes. and the Tibetans they'll yeah. have something oh, about yeah. it without yeah. any doubt at all yes yeah and I think maybe even uh, there's some here in uh, Australia I think the Aborigines might have a skull okay and, and there's a possibility when I bring this skull down there there's a, we might bring the skulls together and if that happens mm-hmm. I think that could be a major thing yes that might be one of the reasons why I'm here I understand, of course. Yeah. I'm sure that you feel that you're on a great sense of mission and you're not totally sure what it is, but you're going down this river. Yeah, just going so with the flow. You're going yeah. with the flow. Yeah, and we yeah. really understand this. We're yeah, the journey, is, yeah. the journey is the message. The, the well, that's wonderful. Um, and for the sake of the camera, can you can you please tell us um, <laughs> t- tell us your name? and? Uh, oh, my name is Bill Homan. Homan. Homan, Okay. Yeah. And the original person who had it was Anne. Okay, it was it was found by F. A. Mitchell Hedges and Anna Mitchell Hedges. F. A. Mitchell, Mitchell Hedges, Hedges was Hedges. a was a famous British explorer, mm-hmm. and uh, there's people that need to people to know about because in this day and age you don't have any heroes, mm-hmm. and they were heroes, and they you know they they did the they they walk they didn't just do the talk they did the walk. And that's what's pretty neat. So that's one of the reasons I go around is to get people to know about, you know, their lives. Mm -hmm.